What an incredible day. Uh, again, I want to echo the welcome and how honored we are that each one of you are part of this significant, historic event. Those are important words. We also want to thank the representatives of the media, and we recognize them today because I want to encourage you, watch the headlines. Watch the headlines. When you have young people who have such incredible potential as exists right here in the West Pullman and surrounding areas, you are going to see exciting, encouraging, and affirming news that are happening when a life is transformed because those who can make a difference are choosing to step forward, link arms together, and say there's hope for the future. So we want to thank each one of you for being a part of that historic start of this particular event. My name is Lieutenant Colonel Ralph Buckowitz. I'm privileged to serve as the Divisional Commander of the Salvation Army for the Metropolitan Division. Together, my wife and I have been a part of the Croc Center process for the last six years. And we saw and recognized the fact that Joan Croc herself selected Chicago as the site of what she envisioned to be the second Croc Center, following in the footsteps of the one that was built in San Diego. Well, the truth is, this is going to be a flagship center. This is going to raise the bar and set the pace, not just for other Croc centers throughout the country, but we believe for other institutions, other organizations, and other people of faith that are going to come together who are drawn by a vision. Even as we begin, and in a few moments uh, kick up a little bit of dirt here uh, to start the historic construction part of this phase, I want to recognize and I want to honor the work of two very dedicated, visionary leaders. They oversaw the project of this Croc Center for the last eight years, in addition to overseeing and leading the ecclesiastical and administrative work of the Salvation Army here in Chicago. It's my pleasure to recognize Colonels David and Colonel Sherry Grindle. Thank you. You know, there were a couple of words that were coming to mind as we listened to our civic leaders and our state leaders. Uh, first of all, when I think of older men, I, I think of the word compelling. Uh, that, that word comes across loud and clear. And Alderman, again, we thank you for your sustained, compelling nature. You, you get it. You see the vision, and you see the realities that are going to unfold in the generations to come. Mayor, thank you as well for what I hear is a commitment. A commitment, first of all, by you and your administration, but also from the resources of the city to collaborate together with the Salvation Army and this neighborhood to make sure that lives are transformed and that good news will overshadow bad news. We also thank you, Governor. Again, what, what I'm hearing here is, is also collaboration, where we can pull together the resources, the influences, the vision, and the wherewithal of those who hold, whether they be purse strings or opportunities, that together we're able to make a difference in a way that no one of us ever could by ourselves. That collaboration continues, not just throughout the state, but also here in our community as well. We are so honored to be a part of this project. And as has already been mentioned, the truth is within three miles of where we stand right now are those quarter of a million people. But the impact of this center, we believe, is going to go even beyond that three-mile radius. But um, imagine, if you will, if one by one by one begin to be affected, begin to be inspired, begin to be transformed. Can you just imagine what will occur when generations that will be affected by each one of those individuals begin to infect and affect our communities? That's what this project is all about. So I want to come alongside compelling commitment collaboration, and I want to add the word consecration. Right now, you're either standing 
or sitting on holy ground. And it's right for us to pause and acknowledge the fact that this didn't just happen because a lot of influential people had a lot of great ideas. Absolutely, those elements were, were essential to making sure that this came together. But even more so, if you look around and you pause and you listen to the children and you stoop down and you pick up a rock or a piece of dirt and if you look real close, I'll bet you're going to see God's fingerprints all over it. This place that we are a part of, that we're going to be constructing and you're going to see emerging from the roots of dreams and visions is indeed God's project and we're honored to be a part of that. So under the guidance of those who have expertise and experience, we're going to have a world-class facility. We believe that when we put people first, something is not enough. Just doing what is enough to get by is not going to do when it comes to people's spirits and souls and future. So we believe that the very best is what we need to provide to the far south side. We believe that our children deserve the very best. And our investment into their future is worth the fact that many have already begun to, dug, to, to dig deep. And again, I echo our gratitude uh, for the, uh, the White Sox and the Bulls and their generous support. I also want to acknowledge uh, two individuals who have been tireless over the last three years in leading our $50 million Croc Project campaign, Judy Keller and Paul Rigby. Will you stand and let us acknowledge you? They're, they're sitting down not only because we consider them to be absolute VIPs, but because uh, we're, we're wearing them ragged. Uh, we're running them. In fact, Judy, thank you for flying back even from California to be part of, of us today. But the, the job isn't over yet. $33 million, as you can see right over there in that thermometer, has been raised so far. There's another $17 million. Now, we didn't bring the offering plates today. But the truth is now, for those who said, wouldn't it be great, or if only, or can you just imagine, we want you to be aware that when you get in your cars today, look down at your feet, because they're going to be all nice and dirty. And that's going to be a continual reminder until you dust off that dirt that this project is going real. This is live today, so we need your help more than ever to invest in the lives of our children and those who surround this neighborhood. We're continuing to raise that money and we're grateful also for the lead gifts of five million and eight million that have been given anonymously. The Bank of America who has given us most recently 500,000 and the Searle Funds at the Chicago, Chicago Community Trust who has also given us $500,000 and those that we believe have the resources of influence and opportunity who will be part of our staff the, the 200 plus workers who are going to be part of this construction site, another 200 workers who are going to be permanent, full and part time coming from our community that we believe you're part of that hope as well. Thank you for your investment, your investment of time, of treasure, of trust and of ongoing prayers for the sake of those who will enter the doors of the Croc Center. We expect an average of no less than 2,500 people every single day that are going to come through the doors of the Croc Center, coming from this neighborhood and beyond. So we thank God in advance of how their lives are going to be transformed.